Hello everybody, it's Gene from NYC again. Uh, this is going to be, okay, I'm, I'm not even going to say it's going to be a short video. I have no idea how long this is going to take, but I've been on the net today and I'm a bit pissed off. I'm not a hard woman to piss off, but I'm really pissed off. So instead of rambly, this may get a little ranty or it may be a, a, a ramble rant. I don't know. But anyway, <coughs> I'm just going to let the thoughts flow and the fur fly. So what am I discussing today? And why do I have this old PlayStation WrestleMania the arcade game in front of me? One, because I need some handsome dudes to look at while I rant. And, you know, young Razor, young Brett, and especially young Sean are good looking guys. So this will help keep me somewhat calm. And... It actually does relate to what I want to talk about a little bit, which is Eric Esquivel and the power of influence and pop culture. So I'll be I'll be brief on on summary, sum, summarizing the situation. For those who may not know, Eric Esquivel is a writer, although he may not be for too much longer. He's a comic writer, currently working at DC Comics in their Vertigo division. Vertigo is the DC Comics line where they pretty much release their more experimental works and their more mature works, depending on one's definition of the word mature. Uh, he was most recently working on a book called Border Town, which, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't read it, oh, be thankful, because, that, because I read the first chapter of that book, and that book is just... It has a very, very, very mean and angry spirit. And it's just very blatantly racist in its depiction of the various characters. And the lead is just an insufferable brat who does things like randomly shout in a classroom, I'm half Mexican! Like it matters. Like, like the readership gives a damn. But anyway, I'm not here to critique the book. I'm here to critique Esquivel himself because... A few days ago, a former girlfriend of his uh, put out a, I believe it was a blog post online detailing her relationship with him and how he preyed on her when she was in a uh, vulnerable position in her life and manipulated her, sexually assaulted her, possibly rape. I say possibly because actually the legal standard for rape is, is, is very exact and that's why usually on the news you hear them say sexual assault because... That's that's the easier term to apply, typically. That that has a little more uh, wiggle room. Legally speaking, rape is a very certain set of actions. So that's why I'm saying possibly rape. But certainly, from what she alleged, sexual assault, coercion, lots of bad stuff. And apparently, he it was also found out that he hit on a 16-year-old girl online even after she told him that... She was 16. This dude is, is especially with the uh, teenage stuff, flirting with a, a teenager when he himself was like 25 and she was 16. Reminds me a lot of Anthony Weiner. If you don't know who he is, he was a former politician here in New York. And he kept getting himself in trouble uh, by behaving badly on Twitter and flirting with girls and sending them racy pictures that you don't send to a teenage girl at any age. It doesn't matter whether you're 16 and she's 16 or you're 26 and she's 26. You don't send, you know, pictures of private body parts. And that's what got Wiener in trouble. But anyway, back to uh, Esquivel. He was caught doing something similar, though fortunately, no pictures. Just flirting with a girl who was nine years younger than he was and still in high school. So he's at first he he denied the allegations and said he did he didn't know why these women were uh, accusing him of these things and now he's come out with this long meandering Twitter Twitter uh, uh, stream where he pretty much admits that he 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 says as much that he's guilty without truly saying he's a guilty he 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 stops just short of saying he's guilty. But he does admit that he has problems and that he never meant to hurt them and all this other BS. <coughs> if you want a more detailed and more analytical look at the situation, I would say check out videos done by that Umbrella Guy, you know, Flash, Just Some Guy, 
uh, Doug Ernst and others if you're looking for a more um, concise wrap up and you know more detailed analysis of the situation because that's not what I'm going to provide in this video I'm just briefly summarizing it as best I remember it that's pretty much it right Esquivel has now put out this this May culpa online but the reason why I'm making this video is because he he says certain things in that May culpa that every time I see it just burns me up inside and, and I, I've, I've just got to get it out the first thing is that he blames the lack of a father figure or his actual father he says he that he, that he grew up with, with without a father so he blames not having his father in his life for his actions is basically what happens he talks about how uh, he realizes now th that in his works he's been writing himself and he's you know always writing uh, these uh, teenage boys who are always you know fighting from a deficit as he puts it because they don't have a father in their lives first of all shut up welcome to the real world you're not new you're not special get to the back of the damn line I grew up without a father. My brother grew up without a father. And we have different fathers. There comes a certain point in your life where you have to stop blaming your parents. You have to stop blaming what you didn't have for your own actions. Because first of all, Eric, if your father wasn't around and you didn't have any, any, any uh, uh, male figures right male father figures in your life that means that you had no one positive or negative to emulate right so so first of all blaming your father not being there makes no sense to me because again I grew up without a father my brother grew up without his father in his life for most of his life I didn't think the last time that that my brother's father was around me my brother was what three maybe four years old my brother's gonna be what 31 in 2019 so yeah effectively out of his life my brother is a good man I'm a relatively decent person now that's not to say that you know I don't wish we had good father figures or you know our fathers have been different people better people and have been in our lives of course I do fathers are very important to a family to both uh, boys and girls but don't blame your lack of having a father or, or a father figure in your life for your own actions. You're 31 years old, Esquivel. I looked you up. You're 31 years old. You cannot blame your father. You cannot blame a ghost from your past. You can't blame your mother. You can't blame your siblings. You can't blame anybody else but yourself for what you've done. Because the only person responsible for you is you. The only person who decided to do things like coerce a woman into having a threesome, and at least according to her, sexually assault her, was you, Eric. No one else did that. No one told you to do that. You decided to. Own it. If you have any shred of human decency left, if you have any understanding of concepts such as honor and integrity and being a man and being a good man do that now own up to what you did and if you've committed a crime turn yourself into the police that's honestly the best thing you could do at this moment stop trying to apologize online and defend yourself at the same time and, you know, put, put out, you know, I, I, I didn't have a father. Cry me a river, river. Neither did I. Neither did most of the people that I know. Okay, growing up without a dad, fathers not being in their kids' lives is an epidemic. It's a social ill, it's a social problem. But you cannot blame it for your own lack of moral fiber and lack of decency. Don't blame daddy. But the fact that daddy wasn't there. He ain't to blame. The hole he left in your life ain't to blame. You're to blame. You and only you. So that's the first thing. 
That's the first thing that pissed me off, that he wanted to blame his lack of a father. I swear, I, I wish at the moment that, that uh, I could play the old George Michael song <laughs> right now, because that would be appropriate, right? <coughs> but anyway, so he goes on and explains that, right, in absence of having a real father in his life, he turned to media, he turned to pop culture. And he mentions that he learned positive things, such as he learning sobriety from Batman and learning compassion from um, Aquaman. And I think it's fine. I, th I think a lot of us do that. We turn to stories, we turn to comics, we turn to myths, and we see these archetypes, and we imprint onto them as they imprint onto us. It's the reason why, at least in my opinion, stories are so important to people, regardless of where they come from, what their culture is, what their religion is. Story is just a essential part of human nature and the human condition. And part of it is because we can see ourselves. We can find ourselves in these characters and in these stories. We can find who we want to be, who we are, and who we don't want to be. So, yeah, I, I have no issue with him saying that he learned positive things from pop culture figures, in particular Batman and Aquaman. What irks me is what he says next. He then goes on to say that, but when it came to male sexuality, and keep in mind, right, now is the thing that he's accused of, right? Because every everything he has been accused of, you know, flirting with a, with an underage girl, uh, possibly raping his uh, former girlfriends, if, if the if the accounts be true, which increasingly I'm believing they are, uh, sexually assaulting her, coercing her into an open relationship and into a threesome and other crazy stuff, is sounding more and more like it, uh, it might actually be true. So now he wants to blame all of his, again, lack of moral fiber in the sexual realm on, get this, this is what he literally, this is what he says, that he that that when it came to male sexuality he looked to figures not such as but he actually names Gene Simmons, right? Kiss, the guy from Kiss, the bassist from Kiss, James Bond, and Arthur Fonzavelli, the Fonz from Happy Days. He blames <coughs> these three figures, two of which aren't even real for his uh, skewed view, I guess you could say, at best, of sexuality, of male sexuality. Of this, I say, shut the hell up, Eric, and own up to what you did. Okay? I understand why you blame these characters. All three of these characters are... Well, Gene Simmons isn't just a character, although <laughs> he dresses up as a, as a <laughs> rock demon. But when I say character, I mean, you know, fictional character. Two of them are fictional. Gene Simmons is all too real. But they're not to blame, again, for your lack of moral fiber, for your lack of human decency. That's not on them. Gene Simmons didn't raise you. Okay? Now, now, now if Gene Simmons' kids act up, Gene Simmons is responsible for that. But he's not responsible for you. So, stop blaming these uh, alpha male, ladies man uh, type characters for being what you could not be, which by your own admission was secure in your own masculinity. And more importantly, here's the thing, Esquivel admits in a tweet soon after this that he grew up near a library, and that had he not grown up near that library, he would have found even worse figures to emulate. First of all, okay, shut the hell up. Okay, you decided to look at three ladies and men and, this, and instead of thinking, hmm, how can I be charming like them? How can I get the girls to be interested in me the way they, they seem to flock to Fonz or flock to Bond? Right? You decided, hmm, let me be a real life Gaston and be a predatory manipulative jerk. And you decided, hey, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm going to be. <coughs> so, stop. Shut up. 
But to get back on task and, and, and get back to my point, he mentions that he lived near a library. So if you're living near a library, right, a place where you can get free books so long as you have a library card, that means you could have read other stories and learned other, uh, uh, I guess, brands or, or versions of male sexuality. Eric, if you were that bothered by the fact that Gene Simmons and James Bond and Arthur Fonzarelli are ladies' men type characters, you could have easily looked up, wouldn't have been hard to find, you could have easily looked up more stable characters, right? Characters who have more stable families, right? Family man type characters. And I know you could have because, again, we're not that different in age. You're 31, I'm soon to be 34. We grew up, most likely, with the same um, pop culture media, generally, right? In the, in, the, um, in the culture, right? We're both 90s kids. Meaning that you could have looked to... Because the first thing you do is mention comics, so I'm about the comics. If you were that concerned... Right, that you were picking up the wrong lessons from Gene Simmons and James Bond and the Fonz, you could have looked to Superman. And I know Superman is a very influential character because a very good friend of mine, right, who is married, and him and his wife just had a kid about a year or so ago, he is literally Black Superman. Okay, big, strong, muscular, works out, very kind, right? copy Superman to the point where dude for a time permed his hair gelled it right, and did the whole Clark Kent curl when I say that he's black Superman I'm not joking right his three male role models right who were not actual real men in his life his three role models were Jesus Superman and Goku okay so please don't tell me that you could not have found better male role models. They're out there. I know they are. I've seen them. You could have looked at Superman, as I said earlier. You could have looked at Spider-Man. You could have looked at Goliath from Gargoyles. You could have looked at Goku. Hell, you could have looked at Vegeta. Vegeta! You could have looked at him. You could have looked at Ken and Guile. From the Street Fighter games. Hell, what is Guile's catchphrase, right? What's his line? Go home and be a family man. If you had wanted to find better role models when it came to relationships with women, they were there. They were there in video games. They were there in comic books. They were there in cartoons. They were there in movies. Plenty of other mediums you could have looked to to find better role models you are just citing these three probably because they were masculine characters who had you know a buttload of charm and could charm any woman like the whole thing about the Fonz that he could literally snap his fingers and and girls would just flock to him right kind of like this hottie right here right (laughs) And you no doubt envy that because you said yourself that you've always been insecure in your, in, in your masculinity. And that when you were young, you try to do things like fight and, you know, mess with, with other men's girls. Dumb thing to do, by the way, to prove yourself, right? You decided to internalize the wrong lessons. You decided, despite having, again... Superman available as a, a figure. You, you admitted that you learned from Batman. One of the things about Batman, when he's written properly, is that he's incredibly moral. Right? And he practices strict self-control in most instances. Instead of learning the positive lessons from these characters, you decided to, to learn the negative ones. And then you never changed. And then you never grew. You got worse, just as Gaston did in Beauty and the Beast. At least in Beauty and the Beast, the Beast starts out as a jerk and then he changes. Gaston 
gets worse and he gets more animalistic. That's what you did. You got more animalistic. And instead of, again, I know I'm sounding like a, <coughs> like a broken record, but it's true. Instead of owning up to your own faults as a human being, you decided to blame three characters that, that just popped into your head. And I want to bring up because the Gene Simmons one really pissed me off because I'm a rock fan. I'm a classic rock and roll fan. I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of Kiss's music. Right? God of Thunder, Rock and Roll All Night, Beth, Love Gun, I Was Made for, for Loving You, Dr. Love, right? All those songs. I Can't Strutter, which is one of my favorites. I cannot think of any Kiss song I've ever heard that said, Rape the Girl, Sexually Assault the Girl, force the girl to do something she doesn't want to do. Let's extend this more to just 80s rock in general. In particular, right, 80s rock, like the, the uh, hair band rock, like so, so bands like Motley Crue, Poison, artists like Billy Idol, right? For all the macho, you know, grandstanding and girls, girls, girls of those type of bands, and I, and I listened to those bands religiously growing up, you know, um, Van Halen, and then later when uh, David Lee Roth went solo. So I'm very familiar with that period of music. Guns N' Roses, although they, they were much harder uh, and much grittier than, than those type of bands were. Warrant with uh, Cherry Pie. So I'm familiar with hair band music. None of those songs, not a one, advocate for coercion or rape or sexual assault. None of them say this. Now, could some of those songs be seen in a certain light as being somewhat misogynist? Yeah, maybe. Depends on how you view it. But still, none of them advocate for assaulting the person you are trying to seduce. Even look at songs that were provocative for the 80s, right? Such as I Want Your Sex by George Michael. Or Obsession by An Emotion. Or uh, Flesh for Fantasy by Billy Idol. None of those songs, as frank as they are, right, say to harm the person that you're pursuing. Harm the person that uh, uh, you want to, to, to sleep with you. Right? George Michael didn't sing, you know, said I will tie you up and force you to have sex. I want your sex. That's not how the line goes. That's not how the song goes. He didn't say that, right? He was talking about seducing the woman that he wanted to, to have sex with, right? Said I won't tease you, won't tell you no lies. Remember, girls, he's always lying. <laughs> but... <laughs> Right? It's about seduction. It's about telling the girl what she wants to hear. It is not about coercion or force. Right? And, we, and if you listen to uh, Anne Emotion's Obsession, it's actually a call and response between a man and a woman who are both becoming unhealthily obsessed with each other. Right? And even then, that, that song is not advocating for forcing the person. In fact, the chorus line goes... Who do you want me to be? Who do you want me to be to make you, to make you sleep with me? So this person saying, I will change. I will become whatever you need me to be to make, to convince you to, to sleep with me. That's what the line is saying, right? Who do you want me to be to make you sleep with me? None of these songs ever said, and force her to have sex with you. <laughs> So please, stop trying to blame Gene Simmons, stop trying to blame rock and roll, stop trying to blame these alpha male figures that you could never live up to. The only person to blame for Eric Esquivel's behavior is Eric Esquivel. Now, I'd like to believe, despite everything, that he can actually take this criticism to heart. That he's receiving from everybody in comics gate at least. Because the media, the uh, comics media has pretty much stayed silent. Until it got so big where they have to comment. 
But hopefully he takes this criticism and he decides to work on himself. But I doubt it, I have to admit. I mean, there's always a possibility, but I sincerely, sincerely doubt it. Because here's the thing, and this, and this comes from uh, Eric's own uh, Twitter, May Culpa. He's a coward. That's what he says. I'm a coward. Let me tell you something, man. Don't do what Judge Frollo did in Hellfire, right? In the Hunchback, in Disney's version of Hunchback of Notre Dame. Don't blame the object of your affection for your failings. I'm going to say it one more time. Be a man, right? Walk like a man. Talk like a man. Own up to what you did. If you committed a crime, and you know you've committed a crime, turn yourself in. If you have any shred of manhood, of any positive qualities in you, do that. You want to help the culture? Turn yourself in. Work on yourself. Own up to what you did. That's the best thing you can do for comics culture, which has a very, very, very bad history of keeping stuff like this on the DL, the best thing you could do for yourself, for the culture, for the persons or persons you hurt, and ultimately for yourself. That's what you should do, Eric Esquivel. You should shut the hell up, turn yourself in if you committed a crime, and if you haven't, then step away and work on yourself and work on your flaws. Go see a therapist. Tell this therapist that you have inadequacies, that you feel inadequate in your masculinity and explore why. And explore why you feel the need to be abusive and manipulative in your romantic relationships. And maybe, just maybe, you can change for the better.